everybody again. Thanks so much for joining me on today's video. So today I thought I would do a more tutorial style voiceover for this video. So as you can see, it is not sped up. So I will be just painting it um, without, without it being sped up. So you can follow along more easily. Um, this is a this is one of my more simpler paintings for sure. Um, most of my paintings have a lot of fine uh, line art, like a lot of detail and line art, whereas this is a much simpler shape. And um, this uh, this gave me better practice for experimenting with colors where I just have one big space to fill with color rather than relying on my line art so much, which is something I... Um, I'm working on myself so uh, anyways this painting we are doing today is of the Pusheen dragon character I'm not sure if it has a name but it is the Pusheen mascot but as a dragon so I think it's a cat mixed with a dragon maybe it's just a dragon I'm not totally sure <laughs> but it's a dragon of some sort and it's adorable and it really caught my eye when I saw it, and I thought it was just so cute, and especially because it had that magical little touch to it. Um, so I'll kind of talk about what I'm doing and put in a couple of random little rambly talking in between. Um, and also, real quick, if you haven't, be sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you enjoy watching it and you feel like you actually learned something. So hopefully, I'm helping you guys learn something if you are following along with this tutorial. Um, so yeah, so basically what I'm doing first here, as you can see, is I'm putting a, a whole wash of water over his whole body. So I just covered it in water and now, as you can see, I'm going in and putting the paint in. So I don't, I really don't have a particular rhyme or reason. I really don't. I just kind of see the color, saw that his color was kind of like a, like a teal, like a pastel minty teal kind of color. So this is my variation. So instead of making it all one color, I'm just trying to make it different variations of green basically. So I started in the left hand corner, I'm behind a little bit here. I started in the left hand and I put a little bit of a light, light green, and then I just was like, eh, I'm gonna go in and put some big ol' splats of green, like a, using my P.H. Martin inks. So I either use my, um, when I paint, I either use the, what you see there on the screen, which is where I dip my brush in water and mix it with the palette, um, the little pans, so it's more of, they're usually either more natural or more subdued, but if I really want a really highly pigmented color, I go in with my PH Martin out, uh, watercolor inks, and those are really vibrant. So I started off with just the pan green, and then what you saw me drip uh, the dropper into the water, that, excuse me, was the, um, the PH Martin, the really pigmenting color. So, like I said, I really don't have a particular uh, reason for where I'm putting the colors. It's honestly, I'm just kind of putting it where I feel like as I go, just giving it some con. Just my main, my main thing I'm making sure to do is just give it variation. So, both having, and what I mean by that is having some areas that are a little lighter and some areas that are a little darker in color but also some that are a warmer tone and some are cooler so if i want a warmer shade i mix the yellow with the green and that makes it like like a warmer color but if i want it cooler and more to the teal area i mix it with some blue or i just go in with the teal so so as you can see, when I mixed that yellow with the green, it kind of it, it changed the color a bit there with what I did just now. Um, also, I so I'm putting some green, but I'm also putting just straight up yellow, straight up blue in there. Um, 
That's really what I do, is I just kind of put colors places and hope they work out. Yep, that's, that's what I do. <laughs> I also put some blue in there. I was not happy about that. I thought it kind of made them <laughs> look moldy. Um, I liked how the other colors ended up, but the blue, I don't know, just something about that I didn't like. I should have used the brighter blue color, but that's okay. That's what happens with watercolor. Um, and I didn't pick the color up fast enough because I didn't know how, how it would set, so, but that's okay. I mean, when you do watercolor, you really have to be okay with certain things, like, not turning out how you want, just, it's, it's really hard because if you let it dry too much, then it's really hard to pick it, the color back up with water. So, as you can see, I'm moving on to the wings. So I already put that, the colors I wanted for his main body, so I'm um, letting it dry to see how it's going to turn out. So that's the thing, is I don't know, you know, I kind of have an idea of what it's going to turn out, but it's really hard to say exactly, so I have to just uh, let it do what it's going to do, and in the meantime, work on other things, basically. So with the wings, it's basically the same thing where I'm doing some more blue teal colors and then I'll kind of go back and dip in a teal or maybe I'll go with the yellow so I can make some warmer green again just to give it some different types of green variations to the color all right so now we're getting into the mountain so the mountain from the, the art I was looking at was purple like a light lavender purple kind of color so with that I'm mostly focusing on different shades of violet so again doing some warmer uh, where I'll mix a little bit of my like pink fuchsia with the with the purple really to make purple I mix the two different blue colors you see in that pan with the reddish well it's not red it's more like a fuchsia kind of color um, and he here I'm using the dropper um, and that again those are those inks that I was talking about that are mega vibrant just kind of putting it in some random in intuitive I shouldn't say random I should say in I'm intuitive spots on the painting and then um, oh and of course I put a layer of water before I put any of these colors down and then you'll just see me kind of mixing them around and that's just what I did is I I had that big spot, you know, I didn't want to keep that spot there, so I'm just kind of dragging it out and spreading it out around the page. And because I just put straight blue and straight fuchsia, you're going to see some really blue areas and some really pink, but I like that. I like having a lot of different kind of shades going on there. Okay, so now I'm starting to drag some of these the colors from the mountain out onto the mountaintop. That's just kind of my way of doing some shading because the, you know, the snow is white and having, well, I have some shading underneath the dragon, but that's just sort of my artistic thing. I just wanted to kind of drag it onto the snow. I thought that would look kind of cool. And oh, there's my hair. It's purple, my favorite color, which I'm putting on the paper right now. Yay. <laughs> Also, since some time has gone by, you can kind of see how the colors dries as time goes on, like on the cat's body. So that's pretty cool that you can see. It doesn't take, it really doesn't take too long for it to dry. Um, I'm a very impatient person, <laughs> and which is ironic considering you have to have patience to do watercolor, but really it's not it really isn't too bad or else this wouldn't be my favorite medium one of my favorite just things to do in general in my life so <laughs> um so that that's just some of my two cents as far as learning watercolor goes you know you want to be patient in between i will say i'm not even the best at that there are many times where i really should be waiting and i'm like i'm gonna put color down and Sometimes, of course, there there's doing that on purpose where there's just a lot of different really cool effects you can do with watercolor depending on like how long you leave 
let it dry or or don't let it dry and then like putting wet back on what's been dried that actually creates a really cool effect where it's sort of that like splotchy circle with the lines around it that probably makes no sense but yeah and just either whether you're just putting water over the paint which is what i'm doing now or putting paint back over it um which creates a layered effect um but yeah, I don't know if any of my gibber jabber is making any sense. Um, so basically because the paintings dried a good bit, what I'm doing is going back in and creating just some effects that I want uh, to create more texture on the painting. I'm also sh doing some shading where I'm going in and darkening in some areas like on his wings there where there's like a shadow. Uh, I'll also be doing that around the edges of his body okay and here I wanted to create some sort of a background and I am awful with backgrounds I really hate spending time a lot of time on backgrounds um, so usually what I just do is put some sort of color wash behind with this what I'm doing is outlining his body so that it's a little darker around the edges like the outline of the character but then taking, but then I take water and spread it kind of, so it fades it out. So it's darker around his edges and then gets lighter and fades out. Um, so that's what I'm doing now. So I put a little bit of water. Usually what I'll do is I'll just, I'll put the paint on dry. And then lastly, after everything is when I outline, I rarely outline first, then paint over top because the paint tends to make the outline look duller and lighter and I want it to be really black and stand out. Um, so there, there have been times where I did the outline first but now for the most part I just do it after and uh, I might do a little bit of some after painting things like um, you'll see I'm doing some shading around the character on the mountain and um, that's just a uh, that's basically just a little extra shading that doesn't really interfere much with the actual, uh, the black of the pen. So, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I have no idea if this was helpful, but, uh, hopefully you enjoyed listening to me.